Hi, I'm Paul Mason, and I'm going to speak a little bit about star clusters. And we usually think of three different types of star clusters. And first we have the open star clusters, which could be as small as a hundred or a few hundred to maybe 10,000 stars, sometimes associated with gas and dust clouds. They contain young stars, usually with heavy elements, those elements heavier than hydrogen and helium. The second group are the OB associations. These can be quite small groups of hot blue O and B type stars. Globular clusters are the huge groups of 100,000 to maybe 500,000 or more stars. They're in spherical shape. They contain very old stars without heavy elements. In this image, we have the, glob uh, the open star cluster, the Pleiades, also known as M45. And it's associated with this gas, and the gas is reflecting the light from the bright stars here, the bright O and B type stars. And there's lots of other stars in this cluster that are much fainter. So one thing that we can see right away is that stars in a star cluster uh, contain uh, groups of stars that range very dramatically in brightness from very bright to very faint stars comparatively. And some kinds can be associated with gas. This is an indication that these star clusters contain young stars and that the star clusters formed out of a gas cloud that is still, uh, some of it still remains. If we look at the star cluster and we look at the color of the stars and the apparent magnitude, now if we look at C, we see some stars are very faint and some stars are bright in this cluster. Some faint stars might be background stars, but most of the ones we see here in this image belong to the cluster itself. If we plot the color here along the bottom, this is the blue minus the uh, visual magnitude, we see that the bluer stars are on the left, the redder stars are on the right, and the apparent magnitude, simply how bright these appear to be. And we see a remarkable uh, trend. We see that the brighter the star is, the bluer it is. Or likewise, the redder the star is, the fainter it is. And there's some stars up here at the top which seem to indicate that the trend changes direction right about here. Um, and uh, so this is a remarkable effect and we'll talk about that more later on. Well, B associations are small groups of the hottest, bluest, and youngest stars. So stars that are very often associated with gas clouds, very blue, hot stars, and these do not remain together in a cluster very long. They separate out and they, uh, um, in fact, don't last very long because these stars have very short lives. So before they can, be, it can become an old cluster, it becomes an extinct cluster. The, the bright O and B type stars explode as supernovas. And so we can see the gas clouds here, lots of bright and blue stars in these clusters. And they are young stars because they never live to have old ages more than a few million years. Here's a globular cluster, and this one's called M55. There's maybe 170 or so of these in our galaxy, the Milky Way, and you can see that uh, there are many, many stars, 
hundreds of thousands of stars. Some of them we can see are bright uh, red stars in this case. These are red giant stars, but uh, very many of these stars are, um, uh, are, are the, these stars are very old stars in a group that formed a long, long time ago. So if we do the same thing and look at a similar plot of the color, which is related to the temperature, we can see 4,000 degrees, hot is on the left, blue is on the left, the, car, the stars are color coded by their color, which helps in this diagram. And we see a very much more complicated result than we saw with the Pleiades, the open star cluster. This is a globular star cluster. And we see, we see the trend here that we saw before, except it bends and cuts off and it becomes much more complicated. And this pattern uh, can be discussed uh, in more detail as we go. But what we can just summarize at this point is that this is a very old cluster containing many, many old stars. Not only are we have lots and lots of stars, but they've been together for a very, very long time, much longer, in fact, even than the age of the sun. And that produces all, all of this interesting structure in this diagram. Just to remind you, what we saw here with the same, this is exactly the same diagram, it's not as colorful, but we saw with this cluster is a very specific trend, and that is the blue stars up here are very bright, the yellow stars are in the middle, and the uh, redder stars are faint. That's why we see so many blue stars here lighting up, uh, even the stars that are a little bit fainter than the brightest ones are blue. The fainter ones, well, we don't see them as well in the picture, but they are yellow and red. So uh, they are appearing down further down on this diagram. This can teach us a lot about stars because this is uh, a trend, first of all, that we see matches the uh, uh, Black body, Wien's law that, and the Stefan Boltzmann law that the hotter an object is, the brighter it will be, and the bluer it will be.